Hello? Oh, hi, Mrs. Van Dorn. This is Bobby. I'm really sorry to be calling so late. Could I talk to Alicia? Long pause. Bobby, did you go somewhere with Alicia this afternoon? My head kicks up into overdrive. In two seconds, I think, if she's asking me this, does it mean she already knows? And is this a test to see if I'm a liar, or is she just suspicious, fishing for info? I say, I did see her at the library, if that's what you mean, because that's true. And now it's her turn to give me another clue about where this is coming from. I'm a pro at this game. I can hear the worry in her voice. She was out almost four hours this afternoon. She won't talk to me about it. Do you know anything else? Aha. Uh -huh. The mom doesn't know. She's fishing. This next part has to be just right, or I'm blacklisted by the mother and hated by the daughter. The first would be an inconvenience. The second would be a tragedy. So I say, if you don't mind, Mrs. Van Doren, I don't think it's my place to get between one of my friends and her parents. Nice. No better than nice. Brilliant. And it hits me. Three weeks ago, I couldn't have even thought that much less said it to somebody like Alicia's mom. Another pause, plus a mom sigh. Yeah, I suppose you're right, Bobby. I'll call Alicia. And while I wait, I'm thinking maybe I should become a family counselor or maybe a hostage negotiator. Bobby? Hi, Alicia. Just a minute. Then away from the phone, she yells, Mother, hang up. And I hear the other phone click off. She always tries to eavesdrop. So did my mom say anything to you? She asked me if I went somewhere with you today, and you said that I did see you at the library, and then she said you wouldn't tell her where you were for four hours, and did I have any information? And then I said I didn't think I should get between a friend and her parents. You said that? I did, and she said, yes, I suppose you're right. You may applaud now or throw flowers if you wish. I'm impressed. I knew you would be. That's why I told you. Okay, smart guy, so what did you do when you got home? You mean after I dealt with my mother? Of course. I made a jillion phone calls, 58 duds, and then I hit the jackpot. Maybe. Or maybe it's just another dead end. The father of a girl who went to bed one night, and in the morning, she's all gone. Like, gone, gone? Don't know. She hasn't been home in about three years, but she sent an email to her folks last Christmas, and I got her email address. And then I looked up her address and phone. You called her? I, I wanted to talk to you first. Oh, and then how come? To see what you think I should say to her. How should I know? I mean, I can't just call up and say I know you had this defective pink blanket and that you left home very suddenly. So tell me, Sheila, are you invisible? I can't say something like that, or she'll just hang up. And besides, it's pretty late. Alicia's quiet for about ten seconds. Bobby, what? Another pause, and then it's her quiet voice. You're very smart. You know exactly how to talk to this woman. I know that. So why did you call me? For the second time during this phone call, I've got to get something just right. First try. Because this afternoon, because it felt like we rode out there to Sears together, and then we came home alone, and I didn't like it. Silence, and I'm thinking I've said too much or maybe too little or maybe just the completely wrong thing because I'm an idiot. But she says, that's my fault. But don't think it's because I didn't want to be with you or help you or that I don't like you because I do like you. It's, it's because I talk with those people about being blind and working, like really working in a real job at a big company and everything. I mean, some lady at the lighthouse talked to me about all the jobs there are for blind people. But that was like a year ago, and I didn't believe it had anything to do with me. But today, it was different, and it was so new to think about myself that way, and it was scary. And, and it made me feel alone. It made me feel alone. Oh, she opens up her heart to me, and what do I say? I say, oh. And I'm so mad at myself because I could have said, but you're not alone, Alicia. I'm here. I'll always be here. And then the lights would dim and the violins would start playing and I'd take her face between my hands. Oh, geez, I am in big trouble. Right away I say, but it's good what happened to you. Maybe you meeting those people was what today was really about. You know what I mean? Because this Sheila woman and all the other 200 and some people on my list, maybe all that is nothing, like nothing. But what happened for you today, that was real, right? So that's good. Yeah, it was good. I think that's true. Then things feel awkward, and for a second I'm afraid I might have said that stuff I was thinking right out loud. Or else maybe Alicia used her real eyes, and she saw what I was feeling. Right through the telephone, her real eyes. I say, so listen, I'll call this lady tomorrow and then let you know what happens, okay? Okay, and thanks, Alicia. For what? For today, I guess, for everything. Everything? Yeah, you're welcome. And thank you too, Bobby. For what? Same thing. Bye. Good night. As I get ready for bed and then turn off the lights and pull up the feather quilt, I'm not thinking about my electric blanket and how much I miss it. I'm not thinking about Sheila Borden or about her dad. Call number 59. I'm thinking about call number 60, my call to Alicia.